Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. You can feel a little safer heading into Wayne for your morning coffee at Starbucks this semester. It took six months to catch and convict the man who robbed and held a young mother at gunpoint outside the Wayne Starbucks last May. No news yet on his sentencing. After hearing plans to close nearly 50 Catholic schools in the Philadelphia area, students, teachers, and parents are urging the Archbishop to reconsider. The closing could leave nearly 2,000 teachers unemployed and affect over 20,000 students. Many past and present Cabrini College students graduated from one of the four high schools slated to close. Philadelphia Archbishop Charles J. Chaput will be announcing the final list of closing schools in a few weeks. How far is too far when it comes to being a sports fan? After the disturbing video of the attack outside Geno Stakes following the Winter Classic between the Flyers and Rangers, police arrested Dennis Viteri on charges including aggravated assault last week. Viteri was released from prison on 10% bail. The victim was Woodbridge police officer and decorated war veteran Neil Artrio Jr., who was offered free tickets by the New York Rangers for a home against the New Jersey Devils last month. That was your trip around the block, and now let's go around the nation with Rob. Burger King is holding to its promise of having it your way. Several outlets in Washington, D.C. and Virginia are now offering delivery. Burger King promises travels won't affect the quality and freshness of the food. Unfortunately, breakfast is not an option. If all goes well, Burger King plans to expand these options in the future. According to CNN, Pinkberry Frozen Yogurt co-founder Young Lee was accused of beating a homeless man with a tire iron on June 15, 2011. The assault was triggered after Lee felt disrespected when the homeless man supposedly showed a provocative tattoo. Lee is scheduled to appear in court on February 6. USA Today reported tornado warnings throughout south-central Kentucky struck and gets severest in Louisville. Damages reported include two overturned tractor trailers on the highway, uprooted trees, and roofs ripped off buildings. No casualties have been reported. However, nearly 14,000 are without power. Now let's go to Allie for your trip around the world. A tragedy you expect to find in a movie became a reality for those aboard cruise ship Costa Concordia off the coast of Tuscany. Captain of the ship, Francesco Chitino, sailed too close to the shore of the island Giulio, resulting in the ship bottoming out. He allegedly abandoned ship, taking off in the lifeboat, leaving behind frantic passengers. Chitino was accused of manslaughter as 11 were declared dead, with two dozen still missing. The $5 billion project to expand the Panama Canal has been put to a sudden halt. Over 6,000 workers refuse to work under unsafe conditions and demand a raise from their current hourly pay rate of almost $3 to about $5. The strike shows no sign of ending until certain demands are met. The construction of a condominium in Japan went hazardous after finding radiation emitting from the concrete of the structure. The concrete used to build the condominium contains stone mined within the 12-mile radius of the nuclear plant in Fukushima, which was tragically impacted by last year's earthquake and tsunami. So far, four families have been moved from the building. The Wolfington Center recently announced an immersion trip to South Africa. We sat down with Roxanne Del Torre to see what the trip has in store. The Wolfington Center is starting a new immersion project to South Africa, and we're really excited to be introducing this into the curriculum. It's going to be a full immersion experience with service as well, and uh, students would be learning about apartheid, learning about HIV AIDS, learning about the different cultural traditions of South Africa. So I first went to South Africa in 2007. I was a sophomore in college at Fordham University and it literally changed my whole life. Um, I went from, you know, living in New York and knowing diversity in my own way in New York, but never really fully understanding how people in third world situations lived, um, how people could live in shacks, how people could um, really not have everything that we have here in the U.S., but still be completely happy with what they have. Each student would be responsible to 
fundraise for their uh, trip to go to South Africa and it's gonna be around thirty six hundred dollars a person um, which is I, I understand a, a huge undertaking and um, but I would also say that um, to consider that yes obviously money is always a big factor but not to let it completely deter you if you don't think you have that money um, I was able when I went for the first time was able to fundraise that money um, just by writing letters to everybody I knew like I literally wrote letters to like my dentist my uh, grade school teachers and my family and friends and I was able to little by little like five dollars here ten dollars here but really raise all the money on my own so um, so just thinking about how you can kind of reach out in those kinds of ways and you'll be able to fundraise if you really work hard at it um, and then we'd be going in the month of June like I said right now we're ballparking the dates uh, June 1st through about the 25th, um, give or take a few days. And the Wolfington Center has an application that's available um, through me actually, so you can email me at rd429 at cabrini.edu if you're interested in um, filling out one of these applications. And then you would have to submit this application to the Wolfington Center by January 30th by 5 p.m. in the Wolfington Center, and that's the end of um, our application process. From there, we'll um, review all the applications and invite students back for interviews. And then hopefully by Jan uh, February 13th, we'll have a team together. And um, it's going to be an awesome experience, so I hope whoever's in interested uh, really goes out for it. Let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. On Tuesday, Yahoo co-founder Jerry Yang abruptly quit the internet company he helped start 17 years ago. Yang's departure comes two weeks after Yahoo appointed Scott Thompson as its new CEO. In a letter to Yahoo's chairman of the board, Yang said he was leaving to pursue other interests outside of Yahoo and was enthusiastic about Thompson as the choice to helm the company. Yang resigns amid growing criticism of his handling of Yahoo's affairs dating back to an aborted sale to Microsoft last year. Wikipedia protested two pieces of controversial legislation Wednesday by completely blacking out their English language version of the free encyclopedia. Instead of having access to articles, visitors to Wikipedia were greeted by it with a message about the decision to black out the website for an entire day. The Stop Online Privacy Act and the Protect IP Act have created tension between Hollywood and Silicon Valley. Google also joined in protest and placed a black redaction box over the logo on its homepage. Last month, the founders of Google, Twitter, Wikipedia, Yahoo, and other internet giants said in an open letter that the legislation would give the United States government censorship powers similar to those used by China and Iran. Apple will make an education announcement at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City on Thursday, January 19th. Apple reportedly worked with publisher McGraw-Hill for the upcoming announcement since last June, according to the Wall Street Journal. The New York Times reports that the event will focus on digital textbooks and that no new hardware will be introduced. That's all I have for now. I will stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Allie and Rob. Now here's Mary Kate for your sports update. While everyone was on their Christmas break, Cabrini College's winter sports teams held practices and games. The men's basketball team won seven of their eight games over winter break, having one loss in the Century College Holiday Classic. This past Saturday, not only did the Cavaliers improve their record 9-0 in the CSAC, they were also able to defend their home court for the 39th consecutive win. After three back-to-back -back losses, the Cabrini College women's basketball team was able to defeat Marywood University. The win improves the Cavaliers' record to 5-2 in the CSAC and 7-7 seven seven overall. The Cabrini College men and women's basketball team will host Gwen and Mercy College for a doubleheader. As for swimming, Student Athlete of the Week, Larvin Sleva, posted three individual event and one relay win in Cabrini's swim meet last week. The Cavaliers' next swim meet will take place at Swarthmore College on Saturday, January 21st. How about those Sixers? Though they have been doing horrible in the past, this year they won six consecutive wins at home over the Bucks, improving the record to 10-3. The result of the Phillies and the Eagles season was upsetting. Maybe we should have high hopes for our Philadelphia Sixers. And happy birthday to boxer Muhammad Ali, who just turned 70. Now back to the news desk. Now here's Felicia for your entertainment update. This past Sunday, award season continued with the 69th annual Golden Globes. In addition to who won what, 
most people tuned into one of the many different pre-shows to see what their favorite celebs were wearing. My personal favorite of the night was Sofia Vergara, who donned a dark blue mermaid gown by Vera Wang, and topped the look off with over $5 million worth of Harry Winston diamonds. While there were many stars who looked absolutely amazing, I will have to say for me the absolute worst look of the night was one of E's own fashion police host, Kelly Osborne. To go along with her oversized puffy balloon-like Zach posing gown, the fashionista also dyed matching bluish gray hair, which in all honesty looked absolutely horrible. Let's just hope that she gets it right the next time. Now moving along to the big winners of the night. The Descendants and the Artists took home Best Picture Award. For Best Drama and Musical, Michelle Williams won for her portrayal of Marilyn Monroe in the film, My Week with Marilyn. Also, we cannot forget the Best Series Musical or Comedy winner, Modern Family. My personal favorite of the night was Best Supporting Actress, Octavia Spencer for the film, The Help. That was one of my favorite movies of the year. Well, that's all I have for you for this week in entertainment news. Be sure to tune in next week. Each year on New Year's Eve, people all around the world think of New Year's resolutions. We had the chance to check in with some Cabrini College students to see what their resolutions are for 2012. My New Year's resolution is to get a 3.5 GPA. My New Year's resolution is to attend all my classes. My New Year's resolution is to eat healthier and save money. My New Year's resolution is to do better in school. New Year's resolution is to stop drinking soda. My New Year's resolution is to remain fit throughout the year of 2012. That's all for now. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Have a great week, Cabrini. <laughs>